High frequency ventilation has been tried since uh, mid 70s and it has been applied in neonates since the mid 80s. There were many studies done before the antenatal steroid use and uh, surfactant use was a routine. And even after uh, we reached that stage, it took many years to understand the right approach uh, to effectively use and we are still learning how to use it appropriately. There have been many recent advances including uh, volume guarantee in high frequency and uh, it's still relatively uh, making it easier to predict but it's we still need good user experience as it is relatively uh, rescue mode of ventilation and most of us don't use it as a... so why are we using it mainly as a rescue modality so there are many studies looking at its use as a primary modality but uh, we still have equivocal results so it's not clear cut whether using it as a primary modality is worth the trouble especially because you have to consider the comfort level of the team we are more conversant and comfortable with the conventional modes and especially we are going more and more for early extubation uh, use of uh, surfactant by insure or lisa and uh, the role of volume volume guarantee modes on conventional ventilation so the duration of ventilation is very limited most of the babies were able to extubate fairly soon, so uh, putting through the trouble of going for high frequency where you need more uh, sedation, more intense monitoring, possibly with more gases and x-rays. So these are uh, negatives of using that as a primary mode. Uh, it could still have its role as a primary modality in the extreme premature babies where definitely the, we expect the babies to stay on ventilator for a longer period of time especially the babies at 25 weeks of gestation and below, where you would expect if the lung disease is significant and you won't extubate them quickly enough, you would rather leave them on the ventilator for a few days to avoid failed extubation at electrotrauma and so on. One of the key things to remember here, even though it's used as a rescue modality, it should be used as an early rescue modality. So if you have started your management like routine with uh, LISA as indicated or insure, and a trial of extubation or if the baby is not extubatable but the ventilatory requirements are high, you would rather switch to high frequency early on for its lung protective effect to be worth it. What are the options to deliver high frequency? So we have multiple ventilators and some of these are obsolete, some of these are fading away. For example, when uh, I started training, the sensor medics was newly introduced and it was a very powerful high frequency very expensive machine it was standalone with the separate circuit for it and of course you could use nitric oxide with that uh, as well and it was an expensive machine more powerful uh, piston based and uh, the dragonfly was uh, available in india for example at a lower price but similar principle we have the new dragger which is principally a high frequency oscillator sle acutronic fabian these ventilators also have a oscillator type of uh, application we have the high frequency jet ventilation which is quite used uh, in Canada and US but it's not widely available in Europe and Asian countries. It has been shown to have a definite role in uh, babies with PAE for example or air leaks and in uh, extreme premature babies where they preferentially use this as a primary modality. Uh, however, since we won't be using it much, I will not cover it as much in this lecture. Uh, flow interrupters like the old dragger which was like a modified flow interrupter, the infant star ventilator, these are not currently preferred. So this is the VN500 from dragger which is a good ventilator and has the uh, newer modes like the volume guarantee and it can go up to a frequency of 20 hertz and uh, this is the uh, sensor medics which most of us have stopped using. Uh, the SLE uh, 5000 and 6000 ventilators, so the SLE 6000 has non-invasive modes as well, so uh, it's a good ventilator.